Maribel and Abuela are arguing. The candlelight is fading. I'm Miss Melissa with the Oosterhout Free Library Book Bites program. Disney's Encanto was adapted by Angela Cervantes and published by Random House. Abuela says, I've dedicated my life to protecting our family, our home. Cracks surged through the Encanto. Alarmed by what was happening, the townspeople ran in fear to the Casa Madrigal for help. Open your eyes, Maribel argued. Our family is falling apart because of you. Abuela was struck by Maribel's strong words. But before she had a chance to respond, a large brick nearly ripped the house apart as it snaked towards the candle. Maribel watched with alarm as the house seemed helpless to what was happening to it. It let out a painful cry. Worse, the candle was now about to fall into a deep abyss. The candle! Save the candle! Peppa yelled. The family swung into action. Isabella grabbed onto one of her vines to swoop the candle up and away from danger, but the vine disintegrated into dust, dropping her to the ground. Her prickly new plants that filled the courtyard disappeared as well. No! Isabella screamed, her magic fading before her eyes. The mountains surrounding the Encanto started to crack. The magic was dying too quickly, the crack spreading faster and putting the whole village in danger. They had to get to the candle now. Casita! Maribel cried, asking the house to help her once again. A railing from the balcony dropped down, giving Maribel a way to climb up to the roof. She scrambled up as quickly as she could. Meanwhile, the rest of the family tried to save the candle, but their magic was fading fast. Camila raced forward, changing shape in order to grab the candle, but as he reached out, he reverted to his normal self. Ah, no! Peppa stepped in next, wielding her power over the weather to help. You have to stop the wind, Felix urged her. I can't, she wailed. Her powers had vanished. She slumped down, defeated. Then she looked up, worried. Where's Antonio? Dolores rushed to find Antonio and found him in his room. The giant tree in the middle of his room swayed and trembled. It was going to crush everything in its path. Antonio called to his animals for help, but they could no longer understand him. Suddenly, the jaguar pulled Antonio and Dolores onto his back and raced them to safety, just as the tree crashed through his door. The blast sent them all flying. No! Peppa screamed. Felix caught Antonio, and the house caught Dolores in a wheelbarrow. All the animals ran for their lives. Casita, you have to get everyone out. Do it now, Maribel yelled. As everyone's magic failed, the house used its remaining magic to usher the family out of harm's way. Luisa mustered the last bit of her strength to hold up a wooden beam while the family escaped. Augustine and Julieta helped her out from under the beam as her magic disappeared. Inside the house, Bruno tried to escape from the hidden spaces of Casita. He put a bucket on his head and ran through a wall. The house helped him, and he landed on a soft patch of grass, still unseen by his family. From the ground, he gazed up at the crumbling house. Come on, come on, Maribel's father said, rushing everyone away from the house. Maribel hurried across the roof. There was still a way to save the candle. The candle was almost within reach when the roof released a sharp, aching whine. It was collapsing under her feet. It began to plummet when she nabbed the candle. Maribel, no, her mother cried. The house slid the roof tiles to push Maribel out of the way and off the balcony as debris splattered down. In its final act of love, the house shielded Maribel, saving her. Casita wheeled, wheezed out dust and the candle flame went out. No, Maribel whispered from the middle of the rubble and dust. At her feet lay the broken remnants of their beautiful casita. She picked through the rubble to pick up a piece of the house. The home she loved was gone. From a distance, she heard the anguished voices of her family. She watched as Antonio said something to the toucan, but it was unable to understand him and flew away. No wonder she didn't get a gift, someone said. Someone else said, don't talk about Maribel like that. Don't talk to my son like that, was it said another voice. There's no point in staying. Leave? How can we leave? 
Someone else said, the Encanto is broken. She left us no choice. Hearing the bickering, Maribel walked off. Where's Maribel? Julietta cried. Even as her mom called out for her, Maribel knew they were all better off without her. By the time they turned to find her, Maribel was gone. Maribel trudged through the crumbled mountain pass. She reached the edge of a river and tripped, falling to the ground and ripping her dress. Catching her reflection in the water, she shook her head and winced. All she wanted was to make her family proud, and she had failed. She took a seat on a rock to rest and get her bearings. She was leaving, but she wasn't quite sure where she was going. Maribel, a soft, familiar voice said. Abuela made her way next to her. She had followed her. I'm sorry, Maribel said, feeling ashamed. Her voice sounded tiny and broken. I didn't want to hurt us. I just wanted to be something I'm not. Abuela sat beside her, quiet and exhausted. Maribel had never seen her abuela like this. She suddenly seemed so much older. For the first time, she seemed frail. I've never been able to come back here, Abuela said with a deep sadness. She gazed at the river like it was an old friend from her past. This river is where we were given our miracle. Maribel looked at Abuela. Where my grandfather, she started, and Abuela nodded. Maribel had no idea that this was the river from all the stories about her grandfather and the night the Encanto was formed. What were the odds that she would find this place tonight of all nights? I thought we would have a different life, Abuela said. I thought I would be a different woman. She looked back to the waters that the answers she needed were there, hidden beneath the surface. Maribel peered into and watched as her Abuela's reflection transformed from that of an older woman to a young woman. Through the rippled water, Abuela told the story of her and Pedro. In the small village where her abuela was raised, the people worked hard and life was not easy. One day, Alma was carrying a large basket of food. Suddenly, the sound of horses ridden by dangerous men startled her and she stumbled. Young Alma dropped her basket at the feet of a young shop owner. Sensing trouble from the horsemen, the shop owner stepped forward and implored them to leave. As they rode off, the young man helped Alma back to her feet and picked up her basket. And that was the first time Maribel's grandparents, Alma and Pedro, met. Later, outside the shop, Pedro sewed a rip in Alma's dress. She watched him, her love growing stronger each minute they spent together. Although the village around them struggled, Alma and Pedro fell in love and were determined to stay together. They made plans and married. On the steps of a small church, the newlyweds held a candle between them. It was the same candle that was destroyed earlier this evening, the candle from which the Encanto grew. Maribel understood for the first time that the magic candle had always been in the magical family. Even before the magic, it was there shining its steady light on her grandparents' young love. A few months later, young Alma was with Pedro in their mother's home. She had just shared news that she was pregnant with triplets. Pedro pretended to faint, then grabbed her in an embrace. The night the triplets were born, Pedro and Alma gazed down on them with true love. But then outside, there was a large flash of light. Homes were ablaze, and sinister men on horseback harassed townspeople. The couple looked at their children and back into each other's eyes. There was no choice. They had to leave and find a safer home. They packed everything they could. As they headed out the door, Pedro stopped and grabbed one more thing, the wedding candle. With the candle as their guide, Alma and Pedro set out into the night, followed by other families. They walked all night until they came to a river. It was the same river where Maribel and Abuela sat now. With every step across the river, Pedro encouraged Alma to keep going his words and loving eyes comforted her. Suddenly, there was a noise behind them. The horsemen were coming. The whole group ran, scattering across the river. As chaos took over, Alma was frightened. What would happen to her babies? She held them tight. Pedro saw the fear in his wife's eyes and knew what he must do. He gently lifted her face to his. His eyes told her everything would be okay. 
He kissed each one of his babies and then kissed Alma, full of love. He gazed into her eyes and made the promise that she would survive, she would thrive. Their children would find a new home and have a better life. Pedro kissed his wife one last time and raced towards the men on horseback. He tried to stop them and pled for his family's lives. Ruthlessly, the horsemen ignored his pleas and in a flash, Pedro was gone. As the other families panicked, Abuela looked to the river and then back to her babies. The men on horseback were closing in. She sank to her knees, heartbroken and frightened. She held on to the candle and begged the earth to spare the lives of her babies. She dug her hands into the wet soil. Suddenly, the ground around her began to glow, and the cruel horsemen were back, blown back by a mighty blast. The candle grew brighter and filled up with magic. Abuela looked up to see they were saved. The other families gathered around and stood in awe of what she had done. They began celebrating. But Alma stared out at the river where she last saw her beloved Pedro. As mountains magically rose up, the place where he died was covered forever. Now, young Abuela was alone and heartbroken in her bedroom in the new house. She watched her tiny babies and realized she could not mourn forever. Her children needed her to be strong. She must fulfill the promise that Pedro had made. She must always work for better life. Just as Pedro had grabbed the candle to guide him that night, she grabbed the candle and placed it on her window. It would guide her, too. She stepped out of her door, determined to make Pedro's sacrifice count. That's the end of Abuela's vision. And if you know Disney movies, you know that our next installment, The End, will probably be happier. See you next time at the Ooster Hout Free Library. You want the end right away? Come and check out the book.